Hey everyone, welcome back to Miniature Painting 101, a series of videos where I teach you all about painting miniatures from start to finish and everything in between. And this is part 88. Can't believe we're already there. Glowing orbs. How to paint a glowing orb OSL on a miniature. And today we'll be painting a glowing orb on this uh, Necron Overlord who has many, many orbs on him. So we're going to paint a few of the one on his, on his head, the one on his very back, and the one on his hand is the one we're primarily going to focus on. I'm using four colors today, Caliban Green, Warpstone Glow, Moot Green, and Flash Gets Yellow, and we'll be using a combination of these colors throughout this uh, video. So we'll start off with Caliban Green. Now the, the, the key for this tutorial is paint the object creating the, the light source, right, the, the source of the light, and then um, I do thin down my paints for this part, then I thin them down greatly to the point where they're basically a glaze. It, it's They're greatly diluted and we're going to be using that glazed uh, thin down paint to create the object source lighting. So we'll start off by painting the sources of the light, so the three uh, orbs that we're going to be doing the glowing effect on. Now the, the one on the back and the one on his head will be only a little bit of a glowing source on that, um, a little bit of glow effect. The one on his hand is the one we're actually going to really focus on in this tutorial and create a giant glow of that orb down his arm to basically his shoulder blade. Now with glowing, with, with object source lighting, I'm personally a big fan of less is more, but uh, I'm going to be showing an intermediate length. So the key is now to look at where the light source is going. So we're going to be hitting it from the orb towards the shoulder with that one in the hand, and then the one on the forehead is going to go in all directions slightly, and the one on his uh, his back is also going to be going in, in just basically towards the right and left at the same time, so in both directions as well. And that's the key, you have to establish where the light source is going, and uh, and then consistently paint it. So then we thinned it down, so this is, as you can see here, it's a very, very thin down Caliban green. It's basically a glaze consistency. I'd say it's about 90% um, acrylic medium, 10% paint. And I'm gonna use this to paint down the arm and this is gonna define the outer limits of the OSL. So we're gonna go all the way to the shoulder blade and I will go a little bit later and blend it slightly better on the shoulder blade. Um, I'll remove a little bit of the effect because that way it's a little bit more blended in. And the key is with these glazes is you gotta remember that they do dry slightly darker then they go on and they do they do blend pretty well to, to with each other. So throughout this tutorial, you'll see that I'm uh, it looks a little harsh, but when it dries, it tends to blend in quite well. And also with these OSL effects, is the more colors you put in and the more intermediate colors, the better the effect will be in the end. So now we're going in both directions in the back and just painting the the outside around there. And now we're gonna take Warpstone Glow. Now, uh, technically I should have even done an intermediate step between you know a one-to-one -one mix of Warpstone Glow and Caliban Green, but I'll just go straight to Warpstone Glow. Once again, thinning it down slightly, painting the orb. And now the cool thing with the thin down paint is I'm intentionally not painting it perfectly on the orb. I want a bit of cloudiness, because I like that cloudy effect on the orb. So you're gonna see I intentionally leave brush strokes on it that will reveal the Caliban Green beneath it, because it creates that cloudy appearance on the orb, which is what I like when painting the orbs. And I'm gonna go in both directions once again. As you can see, I'm gonna go in a complete circle on the front temple after this. Uh, so I painted the, and with each part I'm focusing more upward and uh, towards the, the the guy basically with each of these orbs steps. So then once again, I thin down uh, greatly. So now it's a glaze consistency and I'm only gonna go about three quarters of the way that I did the previous step. And I know it, once again, it looks a little bit harsh and if you find it too harsh, you can take a little bit of the previous step because you'll have a bunch of it glazed down and uh, you can mix it maybe with a two brush blend. But you'll do, as I said, you'll find that it looks harsh now, but it will dry significantly uh, more blended in. And the key is, once again, is you're going to go about three quarters of the way around the arm, but also a little, and a little higher as well. Because, uh, as you can see, I didn't go as down as I did the farthest step. And then with the... the um, now I'm going to incorporate Moot Green into this and repeat this process, and as well as I said with the forehead, I'm going all directions, and the back I'm going left and right as well. And each step you go a little bit close, you end basically closer to the light source than you did the previous step. So once again, repeating this with Moot, this combination of Warpstone Glow and Moot Green, painting the three sources of light, then thinning it down greatly, and then I'm going to proceed once again. So as you can see now, um, once again with the arm, I'm not going to go as far, and I'm going to keep more upwards, more in a straight line of the of the orb itself, and leaving the warpstone glow and caliburn green underneath that. When you go look down the sides of the arm, so now I'm only going halfway down the arm with this combination, 
and just get a nice glaze over these parts. And as I said, you can always take the previous color and re-blend it in if you want a really smooth transition, but you'll see it actually dries quite nicely in. And then I did the same thing with Moot Green, just by itself, repeating on the orb, getting the orb nice and brightly colored as it goes upwards. And then I'm going to do this one same, the other two orbs, focusing more central with each one. So central on the, the, the uh, forehead one, and then upwards on the top one. Getting a nice color there. And then once again, uh, glazing down. The cool thing is about this, this metallics is that these colors would reflect light the greatest, so you can kind of get away with this really extreme coloration of the arm. And then thin it down greatly, and worked my way about a quarter down the arm, as you can see. It's getting a really nice gradient of colors. And as I said, the the first step ultimately defines how bright it can be. You can go all the way to the body if you want, all the way to the head, up to you. I just wanna only go down the arm. So now I'm gonna take some Flash Kits Yellow, which is a very bright yellow, and I'm gonna incorporate in the Moot Green. And so it's a one-to-one -one mix, and then repeat this process once again. And as you can see, there's a bit of a cloudy effect, and that's what I like with these orbs, which is producing a brightly bright orb. Some people will go, it, go all the way up to a white. I like to stop at yellow when I'm doing greens. Once again, painting the light sources themselves, thinning it down, and then going in the directions of the light of the um, object source lighting. And finishing closer to the light source with each step. So now it's thinned down. And now I'm only going down, go only go just beyond the, uh, the wrist. And as I said, people can do very bright OSL. I'm going to just keep it down the arm. It's still going to be bright. It'll still look very bright in the end, but it, uh, it could have been much crazier. And then finally, flash gets yellow just on its own for the final step of this process. Once again, brighter on the top part of the orb, thin it down. Kind of ends up looking like a rainbow of the arm, but that's what the, the light, the OSL would be looking like. As you see now, his hand is, because, and as I said, because he's metallic, the metallics would, would uh, reflect this light greatly, so you can get away with very much dyeing it the colors. With other things, you may not want to go as heavy of a tinting in the end, but um, all these glazes really do add up, as you can see. And that's it! As you can see, that's basically it for glowing orbs. You choose your direction, and then uh, you paint accordingly. And here's what the final product looks like. There's a bit of a cloudy effect on the orb, and there's a good gradient of colors. This get blended actually quite nicely in. And all I did was repeated glaze one at a time on the hand, and uh, it, it, when it dries, it tends to glow together. And on the on the uh, the back, I just chose both directions, went in those directions, and obviously the closer, the brighter it is. And that's how to paint a an object source lighting for glowing orb on a model. As you can see, the closer it is to the model, the brighter it is. And uh, yeah, I could have even gone further with the Caliban green and could have gone all the way to the body, but I'm okay with that. So as always, thank you so much for watching this episode of Miniature Painting 101. I really hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for next week's episode, part 89, which is just around the corner. But if you don't want to wait for next week, check out the warp. Click on the link below for a free 14-day trial to my premium YouTube channel. We're not only get to see the next six months worth of Miniature Painting 101 episodes, you'll get to see over 80 start-to-finish painting tutorials, dozens of battle reports and face-off episodes, an Airbrush 101 series, just some awesome wargaming content. I know you'll love it, so go check out the warp. Plus, it helps support my videos. So thank you as always for watching. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting, everyone.